Welcome to the basic obstetric ultrasound training course for healthcare providers. Ultrasound plays an important role in identifying pregnancy related conditions that put the mother or fetus at risk during delivery. In most low income countries, there is a shortage of people experienced in performing pregnancy ultrasound. This course was created to train healthcare workers to perform basic pregnancy ultrasound in parts of the world where formal training is not available. The videos, as well as other educational materials, available at tinyurl.com backslash UW ultrasound, are designed to be used in a two-week ultrasound course. The hands-on sessions in the trainer's guide are an essential component of this course and must be supervised by an experienced ultrasound practitioner. This is not a comprehensive pregnancy ultrasound course and does not result in an official certification or diploma. After you finish the course and pass the written and practical tests, we strongly recommend you have at least 40 hours of scanning experience with clinical mentoring before you undertake unsupervised scanning. My name is Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, and I will be narrating this 13th video in our Pregnancy Ultrasound series. This video will focus on pelvic pain and bleeding in the first trimester, which can be warning signs of a life-threatening problem. Bleeding is unusual in the second or third trimesters. Patients with bleeding in the second or third trimesters always need to be sent to the referral hospital. Ectopic pregnancy, which is an important cause of first trimester pain and bleeding, will be discussed in another lesson. Please visit our website for access to all of our video and training materials. There are five main skills you will learn in this lesson. You will learn how to identify the normal and abnormal gestational sac, evaluate fetal cardiac activity, identify the signs of complete and incomplete miscarriage, identify the signs of a molar pregnancy, and perform the appropriate ultrasound follow-up. Pelvic pain and vaginal bleeding are common symptoms in early pregnancy, but they don't always mean the pregnancy is abnormal. There are several causes, but the cause may not be discovered. It can be difficult to determine the cause of pain or bleeding by only physical examination. There can be many causes, and pelvic ultrasound can be very useful in diagnosing some conditions. Conditions that can be diagnosed by ultrasound include normal pregnancy, blighted ovum, fetal demise, miscarriage, molar pregnancy, and ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy will be discussed in the next lecture. Our first step after clinical exam is to determine if the pregnancy is normal. This is important because some patients with an abnormal pregnancy will require treatment at a hospital. In the first trimester, we may see three possibilities. An early normal intrauterine pregnancy, an abnormal intrauterine pregnancy, or the pseudogestational sac of an ectopic pregnancy. Sometimes, a follow-up ultrasound is required to determine if the pregnancy is normal. Remember that there are findings we must see to confirm a normal pregnancy. First, we must see a normal gestational sac with a yolk sac or a fetal pole. It is very important to remember that a gestational sac without a yolk sac does not confirm a normal pregnancy. When you perform an ultrasound for bleeding or pain, you may identify a normal pregnancy. In this case, the patient can proceed with routine antenatal care and a repeat ultrasound at 18 to 22 weeks at your center. Why might a woman develop bleeding or pain in a normal pregnancy? Bleeding in a normal pregnancy is often caused by increased blood flow to the cervix. Pain is often felt when uterine ligaments get stretched. However, if you have any concerns about the patient, even though the ultrasound seems normal, send the patient to the hospital. If you see any of the following conditions, refer urgently to the referral hospital. Third trimester bleeding, 
an empty uterus with a large amount of free fluid around the uterus, an empty uterus with an adnexal mass, abnormal intrauterine fluid or tissue, a fetus with no cardiac activity, a gestational sac greater than 20 millimeters without a yolk sac, or a gestational sac greater than 25 millimeters without a fetal pole. If you see a gestational sac that is less than 20 millimeters without a yolk sac, repeat the ultrasound in two weeks. If no yolk sac or fetus is seen on the follow-up scan, send her to the referral hospital. Another condition we might determine with ultrasound is called blighted ovum. This is an abnormal pregnancy where the fetus never develops. The blighted ovum may continue to grow on follow-up ultrasounds one to two weeks later from hormonal stimulation, but no fetus or yolk sac will appear. Remember the signs of an abnormal gestational sac. A gestational sac is likely abnormal if the mean sac diameter is more than 20 millimeters and there is no yolk sac, or if the mean sac diameter is more than 25 millimeters and there is no fetus. Now let's review our previous lecture on mean sac diameter. Please pause the video now to ask participants to recall how the mean sac diameter is used and the steps to calculate a mean sac diameter. The mean sac diameter is used to estimate gestational age when you see a yolk sac but no fetal pole. To find the mean sac diameter, follow these steps. First, measure the greatest length width, and height of the sac. Add these numbers and divide by 3. Then find the number in your handbook tables to calculate the gestational age. You can also find these tables on our website at tinyurl.com backslash UW ultrasound. This is a transverse image. Notice the caliper positions here to measure the gestational sac. The calipers are measuring only the hypoechoic fluid-filled gestational sac and not the echogenic material around the sac. In the bottom left corner, we can see the measurements for height and width are 1.6 and 1.4 centimeters. This is a sagittal image of the same uterus. In the bottom corner, we can see this gestational sac is 1.3 centimeters in length. When we add the three measurements together and divide by three, our mean sac diameter is about 1.4 centimeters or 14 millimeters. Again, in most cases, the machine will calculate this for you. If this sac were larger than 20 millimeters without a yolk sac, it would likely be a blighted ovum or a failed pregnancy. These are two different cases of a blighted ovum. In both cases, the gestational sac measures more than 20 millimeters, but does not contain a yolk sac. This is abnormal. The fetus will not develop in these pregnancies, but the sac may continue to slowly grow for some time. In this case, the gestational sac is greater than 25 millimeters, contains a yolk sac, but has no fetus. This is abnormal, even though we can see a fetal membrane. Here we have labeled the yolk sac and fetal membrane to make them more obvious. Remember these guidelines. Refer urgently to the referral hospital if the mean sac diameter is greater than 20 millimeters without a yolk sac, or if the mean sac diameter is greater than 25 millimeters without a fetal pole. This indicates an abnormal pregnancy and could be an ectopic pregnancy. If you see a gestational sac less than 20 millimeters without a yolk sac, rescan at your health center in two weeks. If a yolk sac is still not seen, refer urgently to the referral hospital. It is common for the fetus to die in the first trimester as a miscarriage. This can often be seen with abnormal bleeding and pain. It is important to determine this because continuing a pregnancy with a fetal demise increases the risk of infection. However, you can reassure patients that a subsequent pregnancy is usually normal. If you can see the fetus on ultrasound, you should be able to see cardiac activity. Look carefully for at least two to three minutes. 
If you are unsure about cardiac activity, get a second opinion from another trained health provider. If after close observation you see no cardiac activity, refer urgently to the referral hospital. Referral should be made no matter the gestational age. Here is the guideline again because it is so important. Refer urgently to the referral hospital if the fetus has no cardiac activity. Some pregnant patients with first trimester pain or bleeding have abnormal tissue in the uterus and no evidence of a gestational sac or a fetus. This can be due to an incomplete miscarriage, a molar pregnancy, or an ectopic pregnancy. Always refer patients with pain or bleeding and absent gestational sac and abnormal tissue in the uterus to the hospital immediately. In a complete miscarriage, the fetus and all gestational tissues have already passed out of the uterus. The woman will describe bleeding and passing tissues at home. Therefore, on ultrasound, the uterus appears empty in a completed miscarriage. Patients with a complete miscarriage do not need referral to the hospital. You can follow up clinically on your own. In an incomplete miscarriage, some placental and or fetal tissue will remain in the uterus. A woman often experiences some pain and bleeding and possibly fever if it becomes infected. Because she might not even know she was pregnant, she may dismiss these symptoms as just a heavy period. On ultrasound, we can usually see a very thick and irregular endometrium or fluid in the endometrial cavity, but no gestational sac. A patient with an incomplete miscarriage needs to be referred immediately to the hospital because an infection may occur in the tissues retained in the uterus, which may make the patient very ill. We cannot tell from our images if there is infection in the uterus or not, so don't delay with a hospital referral. These images of an incomplete miscarriage show fluid centrally in the endometrial cavity. Notice that the fluid is complex, which means that it contains some echoes. The fluid is probably blood. The blue area is a prominent vein in a blood vessel scan. This is a topic we will not cover in this course. In this patient, the endometrium appears thick, probably from swelling and bleeding. The arrows point to the junction of the endometrium with the uterine muscle, or myometrium, to illustrate how thick the endometrium is here. Notice the echogenic material in the endometrial cavity on both sagittal and transverse images. There's also a small amount of fluid centrally in the image on the right. A molar pregnancy is a result of a conception with egg and sperm that doesn't develop normally. The cause is unknown. Although the fetus does not develop, the placenta grows rapidly and becomes covered with small cystic spaces that look like tiny grapes. Patients with a molar pregnancy often present with bleeding, nausea, or vomiting. On ultrasound, we can usually see an enlarged uterus, larger than estimated dates, and an echogenic mass in the uterus, which is the abnormal placenta that often contains many small cysts. This abnormal placental tissue must be removed from the uterus at a hospital, so refer these patients to the referral hospital immediately. Here is an ultrasound image of a molar pregnancy. We can see a uterus that contains several small cystic spaces in this image, which is typical of a molar pregnancy. Sometimes the placenta can have larger cysts, as we can see in this image, which is also consistent with a molar pregnancy. If you do not see a gestational sac, but see abnormal intrauterine contents, refer the patient urgently to the referral hospital. Abnormalities in the uterus include thick or irregular endometrium and fluid in the uterus, often from an incomplete miscarriage, or a mass with cysts in the uterus, possibly a molar pregnancy. We will talk about free fluid and adnexal masses in the next lecture on ectopic pregnancy. Let's review the key points. Some patients with first trimester pelvic pain or vaginal bleeding have a normal intrauterine pregnancy. A normal intrauterine pregnancy is not confirmed unless there is a yolk sac or fetal pole. 
Other causes of pain or bleeding include blighted ovum, fetal demise, miscarriage, molar pregnancy, and ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy, another important cause of first trimester pain and bleeding, will be discussed in the next lecture. Questions for review. Is pelvic pain or bleeding in the first trimester always a sign of something wrong? The answer is no. Bleeding and pain may occur in either a normal or abnormal pregnancy. What are the possible abnormal causes of pelvic pain and vaginal bleeding? The answer is that a blighted ovum, incomplete miscarriage, molar pregnancy, or ectopic pregnancy may cause pelvic pain and vaginal bleeding. Why is it bad for the mother to carry a fetal demise in her uterus for too long? The answer is that it may cause a serious infection. What if the mean sac diameter is 22 millimeters and no yolk sac is seen? Is this normal? The answer is that this is not normal and may be a blighted ovum or an ectopic pregnancy. What if the mean sac diameter is greater than 25 millimeters and no fetus is seen? What should you do? The answer is refer urgently to the hospital for obstetrician evaluation and repeat ultrasound. True or false, if you can see a fetus, you should also be able to see the heart beating. The answer is true. What is an incomplete miscarriage, and what will you see on ultrasound? The answer is that an incomplete miscarriage is a miscarriage with placental or fetal tissue remaining in the uterus. You should see thickened endometrium or fluid in the cavity and no gestational sac. What will you see on ultrasound if the patient has a molar pregnancy? The answer is a large uterus, an echogenic mass in the cavity, and many small cysts. Thank you for your attention and interest in learning pregnancy ultrasound. Please pause this video now to ask your instructor any questions about this course. We thank the following individuals who played a major role in course development. Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, and Nicole Goldsmith, registered sonographer. Many other individuals contributed valuable time and expertise in the instructional design and materials development, including Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, Dr. Scott Barnhart, Dr. Michael Kawuya, Susan Kingston, and Stacy Lissett. Finally, we wish to thank Dr. William Marks for the use of images from his book, Ultrasound, A Practical Approach, and Jennifer Summers and Jan Hamanishi for graphic design and illustrations. The University of Washington Department of Radiology has trained healthcare workers in pregnancy ultrasound in many parts of the world. If you have questions about this video or course, please contact Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, or Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf. This course was collaboratively developed by the University of Washington Department of Radiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the International Training and Education Center for Health, ITEC. It was made possible through a grant from the GE Foundation. Consano also contributed funding. We are grateful for the video production sponsored by the University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies. Please visit our website at tinyurl.com backslash UW ultrasound to access all of our training materials. This material is copyrighted. You are permitted to copy, distribute, and post to websites. You are permitted to modify the content to adapt to specific populations and user needs on the condition that you include attribution to the University of Washington and retain any copyright notices and citations and attributions included in the original basic obstetric ultrasound training for midwives. The material in this video is provided for information purposes only. The University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies does not take responsibility for the accuracy of the content in this video.